Hi there, live from LionMesito.com and who's LionMesito.com. Today, the date is 27th of August, 2014. The time is 1 p.m. Today, I'm going to address a rather controversial issue, which I think I should have done quite some time ago, but I've been getting these questions. Now, before I even give my opinion, I have certain disclaimers that I'd like to say. First one is, these are my opinions. So, I can be right, I can be wrong. You're free to agree with them, you're free to disagree with them. However, um, you know, you're not uh, free to bully or you're not free to, uh, what do you call that, uh, manipulate these words unless you verify them. So please uh, understand the objective for me putting up this video. The objective is very simple. It is to create a dialogue. It is to address the problem and not ignore the problem. It is for us not to portray that we have an organization that is absolutely perfect. Toastmasters is very perfect. There are no problems and we don't need to discuss about them in the open. Let's discuss them secretly while these problems take place openly. So use this video, the content that I'm sharing with you and ask yourself, is there, is there some element of truth in it? Like for, for example, they, they say there is no smoke without fire. So there's, there is fire somewhere because of which this smoke, the smell that you can get. So use the information that I give you, ask yourself, am I right or wrong? And if you feel I'm absolutely wrong, then well, I don't think there's a problem. But if you feel there is an element of truth, we need to address the problem. So I'm going to address the topic today. The topic is very, very simple. The topic is why do I personally feel that no one from the Middle East, no one from the Middle East will ever become a world champion of public speaking. Okay. Now, uh, um, there is, of course, the questions, oh, we have already had someone who placed, I'll address that issue. Okay. So let me give you my opinion as to why I believe no one from the Middle East is ever going to be a world champion of public speaking. Now, these are the points that I've put up. The first one, the first very, very important one is the judges. Now, I have uh, I've kind of given uh, three, three sub points to this aspect of judges. The first one is unqualified judges. Now, you need to understand that the Toastmasters program is a self-learning program. It is a self-learning. So you can choose to complete your projects like 10 projects. That is the competent communicator. You can do it in um, there are there have been guys who have done it within three months. There are people who have taken three years. So you can choose the pace at which you decide. However, nowadays, the trend is people prepare their speeches while going to a meeting. They just prepare their speeches. Some of them even call me up and say, I want to give a speech. When do you want to give a speech? Oh, I want to give them a speech within the next few hours. So have you prepared? No, this is what I want to say. So people prepare their speeches in this manner. They try to cheat the system just to get these points to move to get that elusive batch, the DTM, so they can brag about it and show I'm a DTM. So what they do is they cheat the system and they qualify themselves. So this is the first problem because it's a self learning program, Toastmasters. You get all these people who want to join and start bragging about it. And then you also have people who are failures in the corporate world, people who don't know how to talk, people who are not given any importance and they really want to feel special. So when they have a group of you know audience members that are going, wow, superb, you did a good job here, take this trophy home. So they feel, wow, I'm appreciated somewhere. And in my house, I'm not appreciated. In my office, I'm not appreciated. Here's a group that appreciates me. So they feel this is their home. So that is why they come and spend. Now, what has this got to do with unqualified judges? Because these people are not competent enough to even be judges. They don't have their head in place. And then you need to understand how do they become judges? It's very simple. Every year you have uh, orders from the district, which comes down to a division in an area. We need to have more judges. So they hold judging workshops. Okay. They hold judging workshops. So they get new judges. How do you become a judge? Very simple. You just go for a judges training program that is just done on a weekend for one hour or two hours, maximum three hours. So in three hours, you become a qualified judge. Now you need to ask yourself, how do you become a qualified speaker? How do you become a really good speaker? It takes you 10 years. It takes you 20 years. It takes you a lifetime. Then you imagine this 20 years of hard work to become an amazing speaker. And your, your 20 years is going to be judged by somebody who just became an expert within one hour. It's like having the CEO of a company who was given 20 years of his life to be judged by an intern who just joined in three months. It's, it doesn't make sense. So you have judges who just become easily judged. Then the third one is in the aspect of unqualified judges. 
they you know i've met these people they are nice people okay it's not that they are bad people however these people have good intentions but they don't have anything else to do in life i've spoken to some of them they say oh i don't come here to be the world's greatest speaker i don't want to be the world's best speaker i just come here to network it's it's nice to meet friends so they just come to kill their time so they don't they're not passionate about spe- speaking presentations public speaking they're not passionate about it they don't want to learn in fact how many of them have even read a book ask them how many books do you read per week how many books do you read per month when their brains are just the same and have not grown how do you expect them to have the maturity even judge for example how many judges know what is alliteration where do you put alliteration how do you use it they don't even know figures of speech and then last if not the least this is one incident that really caught my attention can't give you names but at an area contest they had this uh, there these judges for a sorry that was skype they had the judges contest whereby they had a table topics contest they finished the contest and the contest chair did something which he shouldn't have done what he did was he decided to ask the judges which shouldn't be identified to come up on stage and attempt different table topics now where it became controversial was not a single judge was able to attempt the topic even decently they made a mess of all the topics given to them and then all the contestants got together all the audience members got together and they protested asking how can you have unqualified judges judge a contest where they can't even do the basics right it's like having people judge a you know world class speaking contest and they have never given a decent speech many of them what they do is uh, skype many of them what they actually do is simply this let me exit out of skype they focus on okay uh, sorry many of the judges they can't even you know these dtms ask a dtm to give you a speech to deliver a world class speech and you will be amazed and surprised they can't even give a decent speech even if their life depended on it so the first point is unqualified judges the second point which is even more dangerous which is which is happening here in the middle east i'm telling you, it's happening especially in uae uh, the toast masters here i know it for a fact because i've been a victim unethical judges and i'm telling you you know what i'm talking about so don't act like oh he is no what unethical judges who 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 what rubbish there have been judges who have had secret meetings they have these groupism you know i don't know whether it's it's um, an indian thing because we indians always have clannish behavior where south indians come together north indians come together certain people of certain religions and castes they come together here also they have the same behavior they come together have secret meetings and decide oh you know we want our champion to win we this guy is not good he is very bad we should not allow him to they have actually done this how do i know this because one person who went for such a meeting came and told me about it so when you have such unethical practices how do you expect to get someone who is worthwhile to win the championship and see you need to understand this you know who are those people you know it why do you still give them an opportunity why do you even fake that you like them and call them to judge don't so we we need to we need to avoid having unethical judges first point unqualified judges second point unethical judges the third point which is equally challenging is getting lack you know a lack of good judges the problem is good speakers and good judges they are very busy they have their own personal lives they have their professional lives they have work to do so you can't force them to come for a contest so there is always this this um this void that is there so that is why we can't get good judges and this will always be a challenge how do you address this issue i really don't know but i think the only way is you need to qualify the judges you need to ensure that even if there are few judges call the best the next one now this seems to be a bigger problem that we are having uh, point number 4 is hidden agendas at a particular division last year they let's call the division a they called judges from division b now i don't know which is division b and a i'm just giving an example a and b okay division a had a contest they invited all the judges from division b the judges from division b were this unethical group of uh, judges okay they occupied all the senior level leadership positions that you normally have in toast masters so now all these judges got together they had their wonderful secret meeting they came for this contest and in every contest evaluation table topics uh, humorous and international all of them 
the audience members, the contestants, everyone was shocked because in each and every category, they chose not the best speaker, they chose the worst speaker to qualify for the finals. Why? Because these, this division that was called Division B, okay, example that I'm giving you, they made sure that they called good judges to get the best speaker from their division to qualify. So in order to reduce the competition, they made sure Division A had no good speaker. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Everybody knows. They were not only shocked, everyone was talking about it. And they've even decided they will not call these judges ever again. How, how in the world can you have such people? I mean, this political agenda has become so sickening that they have brought politics into Toastmasters, which really ruins an amazing, a beautiful, a really worthwhile endeavor. It, it, it ruins it down to the most dirty thing that you can ever think of. Then, another uh, problem. We have one, two, three, four. The fifth point. The fifth point is group mentality and group thinking. Now, we have this problem here in the Middle East. I don't know about other places. But here in the Middle East, you have you need to give a sad story. You need to give someone who has died. You need to give something that is profound, that touches your heart, touches your soul, brings a lump in the throat that makes you have a tear in your eye. If you give such bombastic, rubbish, you know, sad, profound, heavy speeches, you are a great speaker. However, if you try to give something innovative and different, no, 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 it's not going to work. So as long as you have this group mentality, it's never going to work. In fact, let me tell you this. Up to the Middle East, we have a certain way of thinking. And it's never going to move out. However, when you go international, people think totally different. For example, my tattoos. In the Middle East, people have an opinion. They do have an opinion. They do feel, many of them have told me, these toasts must come to me, this is evil. You are satanic. You are, uh, uh, you are a loose character, evil person. This is not acceptable in society. However, when I meet people from the West, they look at it as different. They look at it as controversial, but they don't judge me on it. In Australia, people find it cool. In UK, some people find it, okay, fine, well, it really stands out, it's pretty colorful, but wow, it's art. Filipinos, they consider it, wow, this is really extreme, but it's artistic. So people have different opinions. In India, they think I'm mad, okay? So different people have different opinions. Now, this kind of boxed mentality, group thinking, if the Middle East Toastmasters don't change, you're never gonna have a speaker that is gonna qualify. Because what happens is maybe you feel he's a great speaker up to Middle East, but when he goes beyond, no, he'll not going to be accepted. Next one is narrow mindedness. Consider these three incidents I've had. This has happened to me. The first one is where a judge after the contest, he came to me and said, listen, I want to tell you something honestly. I said, yes. He says, I didn't give you a single marking. And I said, is that a reason for it? He said, yes, because uh, my ethics and morals and my religious teaching tell me that uh, I'm, I shouldn't have any dealings with a person who is the Antichrist. And I was like, uh, what has that got to do with speaking? No, it's my ethics and morals. Okay, so what do you want me to do? So what do you do when you have such a judge? Then you had one other judge who came and told me, uh, listen, I, uh, I marked you down. And I asked him, why did you mark me down? Is there any area I need to improve? He's, he just told me that your Facebook updates are not decent. I was like, what has my Facebook updates got to do with this? No, in this speech, you're talking about touching the poor. But in your Facebook, you said that you don't help. Uh, you don't want to help any poor person without verifying him. Oh, wow. Okay. Then you had this third one. Uh, this judge was the heights. He said, uh, Loy, I marked you down because you didn't move on stage. I said, what do you mean? I didn't move. I didn't move. On no, but your foot, you just moved this much. The other contestant moved this much. So the foot was longer. I was like, so that is how you mark someone on movement on stage. So narrow mindedness. That's the next one. Then you have the final last and not the least judging by nonsensical variables. What I mean by that. Um, at, at one of the uh, district um, conferences, we had a winner. I asked him why I asked many of the judges, why did you choose this guy as a winner? Almost all the judges came and told me he had an amazing voice. So I said, you chose him as a winner because, yeah, 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 but he had an amazing voice. That was the main thing. Can you believe that you are choosing someone as a world, as a representative for the world champion of public speaking solely based on his voice? 
and then you have uh, you know just just think of it these great speakers whom we remember like martin luther king uh, whether it's obama whether it's you know any leader of any country imagine that you're selecting him based on the quality of his voice where does content come in then <coughs> you even have these speakers who nowadays do cartoonish stuff there was a speaker who said uh, this small little child he came to me he is taking part in this uh, gavel club which is for toast masters he comes and says um, i uh, am taking part for the contest i said okay let me see hear your speech so he says his sentence was the alarm bell uh, my alarm clock rang i was asleep and i woke up and i you know i i i got startled or something like that so this is how he does it he is saying my alarm bell rang and i was sleeping and suddenly i woke up and i rushed for every word he had an action and it was more like and i love mm, the food it was so tasty it went in my body and i felt it, you know nowadays the speeches and the presentations that we give in our toast masters is more like overacting is a soap opera is a drama is more like uh, something is really wrong with them they are, they really become abnormal they they do this strange mutant kind of things on stage why because they know there are some judges for them who feel this is not a gesture this is a gesture you know having a voice which you speak normally is not a you need to shout and you need to peace whisper that's vocal variety so when you have people who judge on each and every small little bit and they feel each and everything should be ticked the overall package the overall speech loses its charm i if you honestly ask me what is the solution for this i would say first and foremost is use this judging sheet please use this judging sheet as a guide and not literally and specifically in every way that you need to tick each and every box give the score based on a gut feeling not on individual marking even if you read books from harvard and stanford that that check on behavior pattern logical thinking and even uh, critical thinking they tell you the same thing don't don't ask yourself logically each and every reason for a particular choice when you're making a choice use gut feeling based on the overall view of the objective that is the first thing the second thing is please you need to change your mentality as long as you have this narrow mindedness you're going to have speakers who are going to go from the middle east to the next level but at the next level they're going to fizzle out the only solution i can think of if he can't change the judges you need someone who plays this game succeeds at the middle east level with the way that they want and at the next level plays the game how it is supposed to be played internationally others you're going to always have speakers who are going to bomb at the next level and last but not the least this is what i feel will be the future of speaking nowadays all the speakers who are winning the world championship of public speaking are professional speakers they have a stock of speeches they have many many speeches that they can use and what they do is they just take part in the contest to win the title so that they can use this and add it to their profile to their credentials and say hey hi how are you i am a world champion of public speaking this is my title and you know just for them to further on with their career otherwise if you are going to be a normal person who is going to take part in this contest unless you are exceptionally lucky and you have amazing pr skills and you keep all the judges happy you are not going to win today last but not the least i personally feel today uh, you know i tell most of the contestants if today you want to win especially in the middle east i don't know about other places but in the middle east if you have to win first is you need to have amazing pr all the judges have to like you you need to have a clean record you need to be the mr nice guy everyone should be talking highly about you that is number one second one is you should be in the good books of the judges third one is you you should contact all the judges and find out what does he believe should be a good speech if he wants your gesture to move out of your socket if he wants you to run across the edge of the stage and literally fall off if you do all that they'll consider that a good speech and last but not the least i feel our middle east speeches have become more like a circus have become more like a drama a soap opera and they are absolutely nonsensical so this is why i personally feel you're not going to have a world champion in public speaking from the middle east i know that you may not agree with me fine if you don't agree with me let me know what you think give me a better solution because in the end the talented the good speakers speakers who have, who like me i used to put 8 hours every day for one full year 8 hours every day you don't get paid for this 
you don't get uh, uh, you don't get, it doesn't benefit you you know after a certain level in speaking you can't grow any further so it is just for you to keep your competitive juices alive so after putting 8 hours a day 4 to 8 hours a day for one full year only to have your speech being judged by a guy who is not qualified to judge it i mean you get so discouraged with the process you decide man i don't need to go through this so you lose a lot of good speakers a lot of good speakers and the only people who will be there will be the ones who just go with the flow and say oh okay i made it through area oh uh, area there was nobody to compete ah i made it to division oh division there are only three people good i got lucky that's all you're going to have you want good quality speakers we need to definitely change the system i hope you look at these these points that are brought up in a rather constructive manner because these are facts these are honest facts of what is happening today in the middle east and i hope these issues are going to be addressed once and for all live from mymasido.com and uslawmasido.com telling you why i personally believe that no one from the middle east would ever become a world champion of public speaking in toastmasters goodbye all right i i also wanted to address one more thing the one more thing before i conclude this video the uh, normal criticism that i normally get for the uh, when i say that the judges are not qualified the normal criticism i get is oh so you expect in football uh, the referees are world class football players or in cricket are the referees world class cricket players let me answer and address this this so called uh, uh, argument that you have now in cricket or football the rules are very simple straightforward and they can be measured for example if the ball hits the net it's a goal if the ball hits your hand in for as in football it is your hand it's a handball okay uh, even in cricket if the ball goes over the line the boundary it's a six and if it crawls on the ground and then crosses the line it is four runs okay however if you had in cricket or football the rule as to be judged a team scores will be judged by how passionately he kicked the ball how uh, hard felt his intentions were when running or uh, something as vague as uh, did he mean what he did when he tried to net the ball if you had such vague concepts on choosing a person's style did he kick the ball passionately did he kick the ball aggressively did he kick the ball um, sincerely was uh, was his uh, leg movement all across the stage or the field or was it limited to certain areas if you have the game judged in that manner it's not going to be exciting anymore and obviously you cannot judge uh, variables such as these that cannot be measured in a human form so when you're talking about a, a competition like cricket or sport like cricket or football the rules are black and white it's very simple did the ball hit the net yes or no did it cross the line yes or no not how did it cross the line did it circle in the air did it go straight did it touch people's hearts and then fly through the net no so it's very straightforward so stop using these stupid arguments to justify having ignorant judges in these contests and most important yes the second uh, so called criticism and oh so what have you done uh, it's very simple i have done much more than most of you what you have done okay the only reason you can't see my trophy is stacked at the back is because 600 of them are all stacked the certificates and trophy they are all stacked in boxes and dumped in one corner because even if you become the world champion of public speaking which you may become one day people are still going to say so what in the corporate world okay you can be a world champion of public speaking you can have the biggest trophy but in the end they're going to ask you what value do you add by your presence or your speech if you do not add any value to the bottom line it doesn't make any difference so that's what i want you to understand and think and think out of the box and use these suggestions and ideas and guidelines for something worthwhile thank you very much let me know your criticisms what do you think you like don't like mostly it'll be hate but i'm ready for it goodbye